How about a huge welcome for Andy Borowitz, everybody? Thank you. Dean Obadala, look there for Dean. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, 92 wide, Tribeca. Dean. Dean, stick around, stick around. I'm gonna have Dean stick around because Dean knows a lot of stuff. So Dean, let me ask you some questions about the Middle East. First of all, where is it? Because um, here's why I ask you this question. No, I mean, it's, there, are all, there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. The reason I ask you this is because I, CNN seems confused on this point. Because I was, have, have any of you guys seen the CNN anchor named Rick Sanchez? Are you familiar with this guy? Okay, this is, I'm not making this up. Rick Sanchez was reporting some news. He was saying that there was some increased violence between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and there were some car bombings uh, in Iraq. And he said, coming up next, more violence in Iraq and the Middle East. <laughs> now, are, is there a difference? Isn't Iraq actually in the Middle East or not? You don't consider it the Middle East? What do you, what do you What do I personally think? What is, do you believe? I don't know if there's an objective indicator, perhaps, but I, I always thought of it as being maybe that whole area from Lebanon to, uh, maybe Egypt as well, I think. Egypt, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Iraq, right through and there. And so the Upper West Side is not a part of this at all. No. It's just totally. It could be. Parts of Ohio. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that, Chris, now what about, you You have not been too involved in the whole uh, Iranian uh, issue because, now I've this is another misconception, you've stayed out of it wisely. <laughs> this is another misconception. A lot of people seem to think that Iran is an Arab country. It is not. Isn't that no, correct? No, they don't, they don't speak. Well, the key is, probably most of you know this, if, to be an Arab country, you have to speak Arabic. That's one of the main things and share the Arab culture. There are Persians, That's they right. speak Farsi. And also, they have to drive a, a car, a cab, you have to, don't you? Isn't that? That's a bonus. That's another. That's a bonus. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'm learning more. Okay. I'm, I learn so much when Dean's on my fucking show. We just get so much. All right, so you have to be able to see, and they speak Farsi. They speak Farsi. So is, bon, is John Bon Jovi also Persian in some way? Bon because Jovi? He sang, did you know about this? Oh, yeah, he's this story? Persian. He sang, he recorded a new version of Stand By Me in Farsi to show his solidarity with the Iranian protesters. That's going to show that fucking Ayatollah, <laughs> you know? When you got John Bon Jovi, okay. you know, if Journey climbs aboard, they are fucked. They are totally <laughs> fucked. First of all, let me do a little bit of um, sort of market research. How many people here are on Facebook? How many Facebook friends do I got out here? Okay, quite a few. All right, let me ask you a question. How many uh, of you Facebook folks have ever listed your romantic status as it's complicated? <laughs> a few? A few? Okay, now you see, that is like the most fucking pretentious thing I think anyone <laughs> can ever do. What is so fucking complicated? I mean, are you, I don't know, are you doing a goat? I mean, just tell me, <laughs> just tell me what's going on. I'm not easily shocked, I really am not. I mean, like, I think you should only say, like, it's complicated if you're, like, dating Mark Sanford, for example, then you could say it. Or if you are Mark Sanford, then you should be able to... <laughs> But I love my Facebook friends. They would never fuck me over like my real friends. I mean, I really love them. Um, I don't know if you caught this whole thing about Michael Jackson. That's been covered a little bit on cable television. Um, the Weather Channel just announced that they're going to do a retrospective of the 50 years of weather during Michael Jackson's <laughs> lifetime. That is going to be awesome. It's incredible. Now, folks, like, I make up shit like that, but then this next stuff I'm not making up, and some of you in the audience may have even seen this. Like, I saw one guy on CNN who was, like, comparing Michael Jackson. He was talking about how great he was, and he compared him in the same breath to Mozart and Kobe Bryant. Okay? <laughs> now, I'm not exactly sure what he means, but, uh, I mean, Mozart, musical genius, died young. Kobe Bryant uh, indicted for, oh, never mind. Okay, we won't, we'll leave that out of it. But now, have any of you been watching the extended coverage all week on Larry King Live of the Michael Jackson thing? Okay, this has been amazing. He's had one guest who's been incredible. He's had this guy, Miko Brando, who's Marlon Brando's son and like a confidant of, of Michael Jackson and speaks um, in monosyllabic grunts. And <laughs> he has given tremendous insight into the last days of Michael Jackson. Like Larry King said, was he happy? And he's like, huh. And that goes on for hours on end. People are writing in. It's fascinating. 
But then the weirdest fucking thing happened. Like Thursday night, I was watching Larry King. I was Thursday or Friday, and he had Miko on, of course. And Miko had just said, uh. And then he said, and now coming up after the break, Liza Minnelli. Nothing. thinking, what is she, like a toxicology expert? I mean, they bring Liza on for her. And then they do the weirdest thing. They cut to Paris, and they have posing in front of the Arc de Triomphe, Liza Minnelli and Usher. Like, who knew? They are an item, you know, Liza Minnelli and Usher. And there's no explanation of why the two of them are sitting next to each other. And then, just to make things a little more interesting, they bring in the disembodied voice of Quincy Jones. So you have Usher, Liza Minnelli, Miko Brando, uh, and Quincy Jones. And Larry, it's so weird, because for the first time on his show, Larry is the most coherent person on the show. And he sort of tries to patch the disembodied voice of Quincy Jones into a conversation with Usher and Liza. Terrible idea. And Quincy, who's being very gentlemanly, says, Liza, remember a couple years back, you and I and Michael were all at a concert together in London? And suddenly Liza like, turns on him and says, of course I remember. It's like she thinks that he's accusing her of having a blackout. <laughs> But you know what? The joke's on me, because I'm watching this shit, you know?